Hey everybody, I'm Dylan with On One, and in this video we are going to be covering how to get started using Pano instead of On One Photo Raw 2018. When photographing for panoramas, you typically take your photos from a single set location, and by either tilting or panning your camera, you aim to create a row or grid of photos that will be later stitched and merged together. This will create your panoramic scene. To get started using Pano, we are going to navigate to our series of panoramic photos. For easy finding, I like to group my photos within a subfolder. Subfolders make it super easy to find and access a series of photos, whether it be a pano series or a series of exposure brackets for HDR. A pro tip when developing panoramas is to take one of the photos into develop and develop a consistent tone and color adjustment for that one photo. Then take the adjustments that you developed for that one photo and apply them to the entire series. This is so that they all have a similar exposure when it comes to creating the panorama. The more similar the photos are in terms of exposure and color, the better. Also, the lens correction will help the photos stitch together in a more natural fashion. So now I'm going to grab my first photo and I'm going to head into develop. Inside of develop, I'm going to make tonal and color adjustments as well as lens corrections to my photo. After I've applied these adjustments to my first photo in the series, I'm going to copy these settings and I'm going to paste them onto all the other photos within the scene. So let's just make some basic adjustments to our photo. I'm not going to go too crazy with the editing here. I just want to make sure everything is exposed correctly and my colors are all there. I'm going to adjust the exposure down just a tad, and I usually like to add contrast to these panel photos to add a little bit more detail. I'm also going to take my mid-tones up around 10. And I'm going to do the same for my shadows to reveal a little bit more of the detail within the darker areas of my photo. The last adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to pull back on the black slider. This is going to give some more contrast to my photo. I'm actually going to hold down the J key to see the black clipping warnings and see just how much true black is in my photo. I want just a little bit of true black, so that looks good right about there. Now that I've adjusted my photo, I'm going to warm up my photo just a bit. Turning up the temperature to right about there. Lastly, I just want to make sure that my lens correction is turned on, and it looks like the correct lens profile is there, so we're good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my film strip view to view my other photos. The film strip mode is this button right here with the slots on the bottom. I'm going to select all of the photos within my series, and I'm going to select the sync button. What this is going to do is sync all of the settings I just applied to my first photo to all of the photos in my series. It's basically just like copying and pasting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all of the photos have a similar look. I'm actually going to take them into compare mode. To see our photos in compare mode, we're actually going to go back into browse. We're going to make sure we have all our photos selected and we're going to select the compare mode icon. The compare mode icon is right next to the film strip view icon. I can see that the far right photo is a little bit more exposed than the rest, so I'm just going to take that photo into develop, and I'm going to take down the exposure a little bit. Okay, that looks better, and now it matches the rest of the photos. So now that we've applied the style to our entire series of photos, we can now send them into Pano to get stitched together. To grab our photos, we need to go back into Browse. Once we're in Browse, simply select all of your photos and head over to the Pano icon. Now that we're in Pano, we can fine tune how Photo Raw will create our panoramic photo. Here you'll find a preview of your Pano photo, as well as a panorama options pane on the right side. I like to use the auto option, which is more often than not going to be using spherical. It's probably the most common. For the open option, I'm going to select develop so I can immediately start making adjustments to my panorama. Everything looks good, so I'm going to go down and select save. Keep in mind that the more photos you have in your panoramic scene, the longer it's going to take to create your panoramic photo. I only have four here, so it's not going to take too incredibly long. Now that we have our photo opened up and developed, we can go in and give our photo some basic adjustments. I'm actually going to go back to where my film strip view icon is and I'm going to select the detail view. That's going to remove the film strip view option from my screen so I can view the photo in more detail. I'm going to turn up the exposure just a tad, as well as the contrast here, to make my photos seem a little bit less flat. My highlights seem a little too bright as well, so I'm going to turn them down just a tad, right about there. And to bring back some detail in these darker areas of my photo, I'm simply going to go in and pull up my mid-tones to there, and my shadows to right about there. That looks good. Now to add some more pop to my photo, I'm going to add some blacks. I'm going to do this by pulling back on the black slider. That looks good right about there. I want a little bit of true black in my photo. 
You can see that by hitting the preview button or by pressing backslash on your keyboard that we've really made our photo come to life in just a few sliders. The last thing I want to do to my photo is add a vignette. I'm just going to go to the show more and I'm going to select vignette. My favorite style for the vignette is big softy. I'm going to select that and that looks like it's a little bit too dark for my liking so I'm going to turn up the brightness a bit and decrease the size. That looks good right about there. A pro tip here is to select the centering tool. With the centering tool, you can drag your vignette around the photo to select where you want your viewer's attention to be. There's some simple steps into getting started in Pano using On One Photo Raw 2018. I'm Dylan with On One, and thanks for watching.